Hey guys, Chris here for The Process, and we're going to be talking to Min today in episode two of the topography episode, a continuation of where we left off last time. I'm a little rusty, so let's see what happens. Hey Min. Hey. Um, I want to go over the layout for the future magazine. You know, People have been watching the episode now, we're at almost 70,000 views, so I think we're doing something interesting here. And a little side note here, why are we doing this magazine? I didn't provide any context to our audience for as to what we're doing. And I had this idea of launching a magazine that would be kind of a hybrid between How Magazine and Fast Company, a place where you would find out about a design, but through the lens of business and how design can impact businesses. And so Min's been helping me design the cover and the spreads and all that kind of stuff. And she's had to work with just content that she scraped together. And it's just a template for content to come. And we're hoping that sometime in the first to second quarter of this year, we'll actually release a physical copy, old school media, printed version newspaper of, of what we're talking about. Last time we were, we were talking to Min, I asked her to go deep and she's come back and this looks super resolved now. This looks really tight to me. In case you guys are wondering, this is the front and the back cover of the newspaper. These little hash marks on the top and bottom delineate the fold, so this is a full wraparound design. And I really like how you're thinking about the cover, not so much as a two-dimensional plane, but almost a three-dimensional plane. So I'm going to hold up a piece of paper here, right? So if I cover up this part, you'll see these elements are the ones that make it over. Okay? So you're going to see a little strip of that. Okay, so it looks like right now you've really resolved the future logo, and I like that. It's all uh, lowercase Futura, and in case people are wondering, well, why did we choose Futura? And the name of the company is Future, Futura. Think about it, you guys. It's an, it's, I'd look for those kind of um, happy coincidences. If we can make them happen, then we try to do that. And she's doing a very simple uh, two-color design. It's black and yellow. To try to keep it a little more economical for us to print, and so there's a lot you can do with varying the tones, doing screens of black, and also mixing black and yellow together. So here you can see Min doing a yellow overprint on the black, and that creates this kind of third shade of color. And once you get into print design, these are things and tricks that you can apply. So overall, a really beautiful layout. Um, maybe one thing that I don't love right now is seeing a hard cut off edge with just a little remnants of type there. But this looks very resolved, the future's first core. Great. Okay, so you're also putting the table of contents right on the cover, right? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting approach. Okay, so I'm, I think we need some space in the back for maybe sponsors or advertising. That's a premium spot right there, so I think we need to save some space. I also like that you integrated the QR code right here, and that way people can scan that. So we're doing this play between traditional media like news and, uh, newsprint and print and doing digital. So if you scan this in, it'll take you to some other thing. Maybe it'll take you an article, or it'll take you to our website where you can dive deeper and have richer media experience. I think that's pretty cool. All right, what else you got? So this is a, a three color. No, this is still two colors. This is another way that you guys can get more bang for your buck and a two color uh, design where she's using a dark blue and a yellow. And you can mix that too because yellow and blue make green back from uh, primary school, right? Uh, and ignore the black. So that's another way you can do something like that. All right, let's keep going. So this is what the cover looks like. So you guys know before when I was talking about this that having that cut off like this, it makes a really awkward shape. And you want something a little bit more organic because that looks really jarring to me. And you can't read it anyways, okay? Uh, other than that, the layout looks really good here. So this is an interior spread here, page two and three. The future is not the past. Okay, really beautiful topography. Oh, so now you've moved the table of contents on the inside. I also like how you took um, the blocks of color and ran it right to the edge of the type and the cap height line. I think that's pretty cool. It's creating some visual tension right there. Um, I like how you've done an overprint of the topography here so that the, the blockiness of the photographs get broken up by the organic shape of the topography. It's a little bit hard to read, but I like it and we'd have to look at that. I'm noticing a little problem here. You have a nice um, yellow shape here and here, but I noticed that the contents 
the baseline is a little bit off. Like if we were to zoom in on that. Can you zoom in on that? You see you guys? You'll see right here, the baseline of the type, the word content, should sit on that yellow edge. And that would be really cool. Another thing you can do if it were to sit on that baseline is you make the type white. So you have some figure ground uh, ambiguity, like what's in front and what's in back. So if this type were white, put on top of the yellow block, it would create this thing where I'm not sure if it's yellow sitting on white or white sitting on yellow. And that's kind of always a nice gestalt thing to play around with. You guys can look up that word gestalt and Aaron will probably put a graphic up here for you guys to see that. This is, do you have a grid system you're using? Is this a three column grid here? I do have a grid. What, you do? It looks like a three column grid, right? I can see one, two, three. Yeah, three column grid with a gutter in the middle. And I like these really sharp edges that she's using here. It's easy for me to find that my, uh, my eye to spot uh, where to read. You're also indenting here. I'm not a fan of indentation, but that works. You can see the eye is going to scan along, and then it's going to see a little indent, and it's going to pick it up. But visually, it's just not as nice to me. It's just doing um, a carriage return, and then doing a hard return, and then just keeping it sharp left corner. But I like the overlapping, and with not using too many tricks, using a bold lead-in sentence, um, it gives a lot of variety in here. And then I like the pull quote and using a little bit of yellow to draw your eye in there. I think that's quite nice. And she's also using hanging punctuation. You guys don't know about hanging punctuation. It's when the quotes get pulled outside of the left margin. That way your type is lined up really beautifully. Nice. I see some repeating motifs. It's important that when you're doing a layout like this for a magazine like ours or a newspaper, since it's not that deep, to have some kind of graphic consistency across, like how you use yellow as not only as a variation to design, but it's actually letting us know that these are call-outs. It's highlighting things, kind of like the way you would do it with a highlight marker. So I like you blocking these parts out, and that's nice. And I also like using the colors integrated in this very simple graphic. I'm wondering, too, here, if by boxing it off in this little thin yellow line, um, that it might be better just to let this thing be a little bit more organic and like break out of the box. So in, in design, we're always trying to push against uh, like opposites and the contrast where you have something that's smooth and then you have something that's rough. So if you have a lot of blocky elements, it becomes very repetitive. Uh, try to open up the design and have more uh, curvilinear forms or organic shapes. And I think the variety makes the layout much more interesting. And uh, also when you're using a light color like yellow on white, uh, try to make the lines thick enough so you can see. You can see that on a contrast level, um, this is um, it, when it goes to print, we might not be able to see it as clearly, so just be mindful of that. I also like how you've created white shapes in here to push the type out, but to then uh, be able to feature a, a quote in there. And she's using the, the, the kind of triangular motif, and you can see that throughout. I assume this is the author, right? So something that we're doing is we're going to be calling different contributors to submit ideas for the magazine. And our exchange there is if we feature your article, we, we want to give a shout out to you. So this is a placeholder for a potential artists um, and some information about how to find out more about them. Okay, great. Good job. Nice. Okay, so here's an example where Min is letting it be more organic and there's a shape here. What I would suggest here is to let the pencil break the grid a little bit. If you're going to have an organic element, like let it flow outside. Okay. I think that would be nice. And I also like now, uh, we've seen um, type overlaying on images, but type over type. This works really well. The reason why it works is this is really big and bold, and it's a chunky amount, and it's a light yellow color, while you have the finer uh, body copy in black, and the two sitting on top of each other make for a really nice combination. Now here, I like how Min, instead of just doing one box for the photo, how she uh, cropped it and put it into three boxes. I think it'd be cool if you are gonna crop it and put it into three boxes, do more a, a Dave, David Hockney-esque kind of thing, where you, you make some of the images bigger and smaller so that there's a little bit more of an offset. Okay, cool. Really great layouts, very sharp. You guys can appreciate that, right? Okay, this bothers me a little bit here because we have the text and then we have it kind of, the tangency to the top of the box feels a little bit off to me. Whenever you have two elements that are close to each other, it should be like right on top or it should be farther apart. So it's the ones in the middle, it's kind of like a no man's land, that's where you want to push and break it out, OK? 
Okay. I like everything about this page. Beautiful big chunk of type. And this is a, it's DIN black? Yeah, DIN. DIN. Okay, DIN, D-I-N, you guys, that's another one of our favorite typefaces and an approved typeface if you're looking at the typography manual. I love how there's so much negative space and the contrast, we talked about this before, having something really large like this next to something very tiny and delicate like this. The two play off each other really well. So it's really nice there. And then in terms of the illustration, the only thing I don't like about this is this illustration. Um, I think the, maybe the, the, the money signs on the cloud, something about it feels like not professional, not, not speaking to business people. The illustration concept itself is nice, uh, how they're like building something in the cloud, uh, but just that throws me off a little bit. Everything else is so sophisticated, this one throws me off. Okay, ooh, I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, we've been talking about repeating forms and motifs, and before we saw this little triangular wedge, more as an anchor for the author, and now Min's taking that as a shape and using that uh, instead of a traditional box and, and breaking it up. And this kind of layout was very hard to achieve in terms of getting the harmony to work because you have to have movement around the page, but you have to be able to do it so it doesn't feel like a, a pattern drawing your eye off. So it almost feels like um, maybe there's some kind of golden means, golden rectangle, triangle, you know, square or something, where it feels like it's kind of drawing this in to a loop, which is very nice. Uh, we got some widows here, because the internet's gonna get mad at me if I don't mention that. It's kind of hard to avoid on a small block of copy like this, so that's when you maybe work with the writer to add or delete a few words so that this, the, it, you don't end on a widow right there. Okay, now you're using the duotone thing, right? Okay, so we still have this. Oh, okay. Now you've added in um, a sample ad block here. Not quite a full page ad. This is like a junior full page ad or something like that. And now you're using the blue and yellow and she's using a duotone here. So you're getting a lot more bang for the buck there if you guys look at that. I like how sometimes the blue is opaque and sometimes uh, maybe there's an opportunity for you to make the blue um, over an overprint, so the blue and the yellow are mixing together. So those are all like these little tricky printing things that you can do. I see you've got this and this worked out. Uh, this still bugs me a little bit, right? And you put in the barcode. It's really interesting when you put in the barcode and all the social media, almost like the legalese copy, that it makes the layout feel real. Like it feels like you just pulled this off the newsstand, right? So again, if I cover this up, you guys can see that having the barcode, having the price, the date, all that kind of stuff makes something feel really like if it existed. And so there's a tip for you there. If you guys are doing some spec projects and you want it to make it look more like uh, it's, it's a commission piece, include some of those details because those details signify to us on a subconscious level that it must be real. Now this is a full color ad here. And I'm wondering now our budget's gonna go through the roof, right? So you're adding uh, different colors, so, so we have to kind of figure out how to do that now. Maybe we reserve the cover and, and the back for a full color and we could spend money on that, I don't know. And you can see the differences go up one, where she's mixing a duotone print, and you can do this in Photoshop by selecting uh, two PMS colors, or go down, where this is just a monotone. It's just using blue. Instead of printing with black, it uses this dark blue. Okay. And this is just the same layout, right? Same uh, Just uh, using the two tones. Okay, great. So let's just scan through this. Go ahead. Oh, look at that, you guys. There's something different. Um, this is new, right? Yeah. Like to me, to my eye, having these duotones in here really add a lot of pop and value uh, because for, before it's very flat and graphic, so it's nice to have a combination of both. We've talked about uh, the contrast in point sizes in, in, in weight or texture, and now we have contrast in image or illustration styles. And this is pretty cool. So Min went away from the thin yellow box, and it's almost the same graphic as before, except for now she's using bold, or not bold, but there's a little mistake there. There's a light yellow line, but anyways. And now the illustration breaks outside, and you can see it, it feels a lot more dynamic, and it breaks it here and here, and that's really cool. You guys take a look at this, take a look at that. Aaron, can you tell like one feels more expensive than the other, right? And it's just by using Duotone, just being um, uh, kind of having mastery over the process of printing uh, helps you to kind of bring in new concepts or ideas to, to kind of push your budget a little bit in terms of 
uh, achieving a perceived value increase even though it's not really, okay? That's really nice, okay, nice. This also looks much better in the Duotone print. This could be like a beautiful annual report or something. And I also like how you use the triangles. So it's almost like uh, Min has three or four ingredients. Like when you watch um, Chopped, that reality show on the Food Network, how you, you have a mystery basket and you pull out salt, um, Twinkies, and sardines. Like what are you going to do with those three things? You don't know. But here, Min is taking one element, one ingredient, like say sardines, and she's figured out like how to make a soup out of it, how to make a salad, how to make a sandwich, how to make a main course and an appetizer out of one ingredient. That ingredient right now is this triangular shape. So the triangular shape is an anchor for the author's bio or his contact information. The triangular shape is a mask to hold as a container photography and illustration. The triangles also use as a way for your eye to find the different points. So those little triangles, and they're all treated a little bit differently, right? Mm -hmm. So one has a circle over it, one has a duotone image, one is just small, and it points right to where the points begin. Min is trying uh, a bunch of different ways to present the author. So I know that people on the internet had remarked like, wow, after the first or second idea, I'm stuck. And Min's ability to kind of just take one thing and play and play and play, it allows us to look at kind of almost every option that you can conceive of. And this shows <coughs> Min's ability, her elasticity and her creativity to try lots of different things. They're all appropriate. They all look really good. I'm not sure I have one favorite over another. Uh, do you? I think I picked this one. Yeah, that one looks really good. And that's the one you wound up using, right? But it's good to see all the exploration. Oh, and here's a mock-up? Mock-up for the mystery cover. OK, so we have the two-up grid. Um, have we resolved what the cover is going to look like yet? It's still a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to release this thing in first or second quarter. Um, so here we're using three colors, blue and the yellow. And you can see now we picked a much more vibrant blue and yellow. Do you, do you know why we picked the blue and the yellow, man? Uh, why do we pick that? I think you like the vibrancy. The vibrancy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, something that really pops. Mm -hmm. It's almost like fluorescent. It's a really rich, deep, saturated blue and a really vibrant yellow. Okay, what else is down there? So that's a different angle of it. Now, did you print this out and, and make something and photograph it? Did the mock-up on the Photoshop. Oh, you did a Photoshop mock-up. Okay, so let me address something to our audience, okay? People are always wondering, like, are mock-ups cheating? Like, should we use a mock-up? Isn't that just because everybody else has the same mock-up and you can use that? And I think that's, for me, it's going to get controversial in about two seconds. I think that's just insecurity. I'm just going to call it out. We use lots of tools. We use any and every tool. And the thing that's important to me is the exploration and the realization of your idea. Not necessary, like if you went out to the, to the store and bought the paper and printed it out and if you cut it up and then uh, did all this stuff and ordered the paper from a French paper company to print it out, what for? Let's just say the layout is bad. I would rather have men do those kind of explorations with how to treat the authors and come up with 12 layouts then for her to sit there and mock this thing up for real and print it out there's a time and place for that this is not the time or the place and once you get into the professional working space you'll realize a person who can produce multiple high quality iterations of a design over another person is going to be exponentially more valuable this is cool that's what i want to see so min spent 10 minutes found the right mock-up and she has to still use an editorial eye. She's not going to just pick an ugly one. If it was on a fruity background or whatever else that's back there, just a simple gray seamless psych, and then to drop this in, and it's just done. What is this? Oh, this is in InDesign? This one's the latest version. The latest, latest version? OK. So if you guys want to know what program she's using, she could have used either Adobe Illustrator or Adobe InDesign. And for doing multiple page layouts and spreads and masters, it's a lot easier to do it in InDesign. So remember how I was talking about this block? It's a little uncomfortable for me. So she's trying lots of different things here. I'm not sure a client's going to want us defacing their ad by having the type bleed over. That's just an unfortunate reality we had to deal with. OK, freeze right there. All right. So you can see now Min has taken the photograph and done the Hockney treatment and scaled them a little differently. It creates a little more visual interest. Oh, here's Min trying to fix this part here. Yeah. But not now fully resolved. Maybe that's not a great idea. Maybe we need an organic drawing, something that can sit on top without a box on it. 
Cool. All right. Uh, thanks very much, man. And uh, I think we're, we'll uh, hopefully have satisfied the need for topography and didn't see more of what Min has done. Sorry it's taking us so long to get this episode out to you guys. Uh, leave your comments below. We'll be checking it out. Thanks a lot. I'm Chris, and this is The Process.